So you know what we're doing now? We're getting into an, another topic for our third episode of our four-part series in partnership with uh, Caribbean uh, Vitreous and uh, Retina uh, Surgery uh, Limited. And uh, we're going to talk ab uh, about uh, these. And by the way, it's uh, Caribbean Vitreous and Retina Surgery Limited and the Trinidad High Eye Hospital. We're joined by optometrist Ibrahim Mohammed to tell us about Presbyopia. I hope I have the pronunciation correct, uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed. Uh, is, is, have I pronounced it correctly? Presbyopia or presbyopia? How, how is it pronounced? Hi, morning. Um, it's presbyopia. I pronounced it correct. Yeah. Right. So presbyopia. So, and we've, in, in, the, in the video, people would have gotten an idea of, of what it is. But we also have a, a listening audience as well. And just so people can understand, what is presbyopia? So presbyopia is basically an age-related eye condition and it causes a slow deterioration in a patient's near vision. So this happens, as we all know, we have a lens in our eye, a natural lens. And as we get older, this lens becomes a little rigid, harder. So it's not able to focus easily at different distances as it would have been when we were younger. So this is basically what presbyopia is. And it progresses, uh, sorry, yeah. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead okay. It yeah, progresses go from ahead. around 40 years of age all the way up to around 60 years of age. And what would be the symptoms? Because as, as we, we saw in the video, we were talking about people 40 years, 40 years and over. What, what right. will give you an indicator that, that you, you may be suffering from presbyopia? So one of the main symptoms would be an increased reading distance. So, for example, a person may have a reading distance of around 40 centimeters. For example, if they're reading their phone or a book, and they would find that they have to pull it a little further away to see it clearer. That's usually one of the first symptoms. They may also have blurring or finer fine print, for example, medicine bottles, um, small books. And then also they would have an increase in frontal headaches, which is usually associated with the eyes if they try to read for a long period of time or even use the computer for a long period of time. And now that we, we're getting some indicators here, let's talk about the treatments now. What, what, what uh, treatments are available as far as dealing with this condition? So the main treatments available is, well, that we optometrists usually do is spectacle lenses. So we usually have two main options of, in terms of spectacles. We have bifocals and we have progressives. So bifocals is basically one glasses with two different prescriptions in them. You have a distance area and a reading area. In these lenses, you will see a line running through the lens. This basically tells the patient where to look. When you look above the line, you see distance. And when you look below the line, you see to read. So that's a bifocal. The progressives, which is more of the go-to option, it incorporates three different prescriptions in one glasses. You have a distance, you have a reading, but you also have an intermediate area, or we call it computer area. And the progressive is mainly used as an all-in-one glasses. It doesn't have the line like the bifocal, so it's a little more cosmetically appealing as well. It's the progressive is better for a lot of patients who do a lot of computer work as well, because progressives incorporates that computer area, whereas the bifocal does not. And are there any other treat treatment options that are available at this time? Yeah, so we, we have a wide range of treatment options available besides glasses. You would usually have, in terms of treatment options, contact lenses. We call them multifocal contact lenses. It works similar to the glasses. You can correct your distance as well as your reading. It's available in a wide range of prescriptions and brands. You also have surgical options. We have what we call implantable contact lenses, um, clear lens exchange, and also laser surgery to correct your prescription as well. And as we talk about this situation, and as we mentioned in, in, the, in the start of our discussion with the introductory video, uh, this starts to affect persons generally from 40 years and, 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 and older. Is it a, right, a yeah. degenerative condition? Does it, does it get worse? Yeah, so it starts off around 40, but it continues to get worse until the age of around 60. So it's important uh, every two years, a person will get an, uh, an eye exam with the optometrist so that the optometrist can advise them if to update the spectacles and increase the prescription a little stronger. And, and how often, uh, as we talk about uh, the, the, this condition, uh, uh, Mr. Mohammed, uh, when, when we talk about uh, changing glasses or spectacles, uh, as you refer to them, I suppose uh, a lot of people probably wonder, uh, how often uh, and, and, and when should they be, be, be changing their glasses? 
We usually advise a routine exam every two years for patients who have systemic conditions such as diabetes and hypertension. We advise one year. However, with your, if a patient has a glasses and then after a while they realize that they have to increase the distance they see to read or they get a little dim vision or a little blurriness, then they can come in sooner than that for an eye exam to see if it's a glasses change or if anything else is going on with the eyes that they need to get checked out. And as we talk about presbyopia generally, I suppose it's a, it's a term that maybe many of us would not have heard, but it's a condition that many of us can identify with, especially those uh, 40 years and, and older. Uh, any additional information that you'd like to provide uh, for us this morning in relation to this specific condition? It's, it's really good to get a routine exam done every two years and talk to your optometrist about all the options available. Sometimes patients may not always want glasses or use glasses all the time, and you have to get the, the optometrist to let you know the best option available for you. We also have what we call office spectacles, which is just a computer and a reading correction as well. So this is a very good for persons who are in the computer whole day or in an office space that they do not really need glasses all the time, but they need it for computer and reading. And, uh, and especially now, um, so in relation to the fact that we are in COVID-19, a lot of people on, on, the, on the phones, on, this, on the tablets, on the devices, working online, spending a lot of time online. Uh, are, are you seeing a lot of people coming in reporting something similar uh, to presbyopia? Yes, one of the reasons I um, wanted to speak about presbyopia today is I realize a lot of people are coming in and they are very worried that all of a sudden they cannot see to read or they're not seeing their computer clearly and they get very worried and it's mainly presbyopia which is not a serious condition it just usually you just need to correct it with a pair of glasses or contact lens so that's why i wanted to bring raise it out raise a little bit of awareness on the topic um usually we have an increase also in the amount of computer time that people are having home and I also find the office glasses is better because patients get a lot of improvement in terms of the computer and reading and they necessarily could just use the glasses for the computer. They don't have to use it all the time. And generally, as, as, as a final comment, before we give everyone the contact information uh, for the Trinidad Eye Hospital uh, and then could go on the website for more information. Uh, I, are you seeing people showing that, that level of concern about their eyes? It might sound like an obvious question, but because there might be other priorities, people just don't have the time to go and get tested or, or go on, uh, if they have a particular condition that they don't have time to, to follow up on it. Uh, do you get the sense that people are, are, are placing some sort of emphasis on their eye health? I think now it's, um, we find people are a little more aware of, or more concerned about their eyes because they realize that they have a lot more screen time and they're doing a lot more work from home, especially, especially with kids as well. A lot of parents starting to bring in their kids, show concern, make sure that the kids' eyes are healthy because they know they're exposed to computer reading and they are inside a lot. So definitely there's an increase of, in awareness in terms of the eyes. Well, uh, Mr. Mohamed, we want to thank you very much indeed uh, for taking the time to be with us this morning to just explain even more about something that many of us might be experiencing but didn't really understand fully what the condition it is uh, or, or topic this, this morning, presbyopia. And uh, for those of you who would like to, to reach out uh, to the Trinidad Eye Hospital, the Caribbean Vitreous and Retina Surgery Limited, you can reach them on their website, www.trinidadeyehospital.org. You can call 235-4834. And of course, they're on social media as well. Mr. Walmer, thanks very much for taking the time to be with us this morning. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You're more than welcome. As we come around towards 7.33 in Trinidad and Tobago, just to update you, uh, as we said, Karen Pollard wasn't dismissed. He, he had retired hurt. And at the moment, it's 101 for four. After 17 overs, Roston Chase is still there on the 36, but the Western is struggling to get a, a really competitive total. But we'll have to wait and see how Bangladesh manage when they reply with three overs to go. The Western is 101 for four in uh, their third match of the men's World T20 tournament in the United Arab Emirates. This match is being played in Sharjah and not Dubai where the West Indies played their first two matches. As we go to the break here, a couple of submissions by Misty Gans from Kunupia. The first she captions as Christmas is coming, sorrel in bloom. Indeed, it's around the test time of year you look forward to sorrel. And the second is the video of butterflies flutting around her flowering vervine, vervine plant in the garden. Yes, uh, uh, the do tend to attract quite a few butterflies 
and it's all a very nice image uh, with the vervine in all its glory in uh, the rainy season as we go to the break. <laughs>